Good morning, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Um, last night, I was able to make a uh, Hell in the Cell uh, review. I got that posted up on the channel, but the one thing I didn't talk about on my uh, review was uh, the thing that I found uh, pretty funny uh, as we were uh, watching the show last night somewhere around the, uh, the John Cena main event. Um, someone uh, put up the story, uh, and it started to evolve from there, that the uh, Carters are putting... TNA wrestling up for sale, trying to uh, get out of the business. Uh, earlier in the morning, as I was getting ready, doing my uh, stuff, I, I normally listen to some sort of uh, a podcast in the morning because I'm trying to constantly be moving and not watching television where you're sitting still and uh, waiting until the last moment uh, to, uh, to run out the door. Um, you know, Dave Meltzer was the one this story comes from, and he had mentioned it on the podcast, but the way that he had mentioned it, I didn't even really think this was a story because I sort of thought this was just common knowledge that everybody had, had known for, for so long. But uh, the way this story is, is, is broke and, and grown, I, I just really, you know, can't believe it. Uh, TNA as a company is um, pretty much been bled dry. I, I mean, for years the the, the company took on uh, a lot of water, much like, you know, you could say the, t the Titanic did after hitting the iceberg, uh, you know, water's just blowing on board when they uh, signed the big money contracts of uh, Hulk Hogan and, and Eric Bischoff, they convinced that uh, going out and signing free agents uh, for, from WWE guys like uh, Mr. Anderson, Rob Van Dam, uh, were brought in, Jeff Hardy, uh, Shannon Moore, you know, they, they signed a lot of guys uh, really fast, thinking that you know they were going to start up this Monday Night Wars uh, in 2010, and then basically they would be off and running, and they would either be uh, competing with the WWE, and they would be winning the war, uh, bringing more money to them by uh, ad revenue for their shows on Spike TV, or they would at least be competing. Uh, but I mean, the wars lasted a month, and then they were over, <laughs> and. Uh, Basically, uh, you can see that the uh, the Carters have been trying to, to fix the books as of late. Uh, Rob Van Dam left the company, chose not to re-sign. Uh, re there was a big hussy fuss about Jesse Sorensen um, being released after he be promised that he would have a job for life after breaking his neck uh, in a ring against Zima Ion. And... Uh, uh, most notably, October 1st, when Hulk Hogan's contract expired. Hulk Hogan being the one guy that basically the whole company had been built around. Every storyline in the company, whether it was for you know the jobbers on the uh, opening uh, card or the main event, everything has revolved around Hulk Hogan for the past three years, whether it was Fortune or Immortal or uh, you know this whole AJ with Dixie storyline. Hulk just being the uh, general manager trying to step in and, and, and re-sign AJ. Where we go from here is I don't know. Uh, you know, Dave Meltzer has talked about the possible sale of TNA for a good long time, and every time he's, he's done it, he says that it, it, would, be, it would make sense uh, for Spike TV uh, to come in and buy this. As a wrestling company, you know, TNA is never going to you know, be the, you know, the top dog of them all. But as a television show that produces, you know, two hours of TV on Thursday nights, it's a show that's always produced ratings for Spike TV, and they've never really felt like they weren't getting what they were paying for. Um, Spike TV right now is currently running a uh, mixed martial arts company, Bellator, which runs on Friday nights. And, um, you know, they stepped in and they bought that company uh, from the ashes. Um, as they were going out of business, knowing that they would be able to pull a, a strong number uh, to be there. Um, people have said that maybe uh, Spike TV would be looking at picking up possibly a, a WWE contract uh, for SmackDown. Maybe SmackDown could be the sort of lead-in uh, for Bellator, giving them a, a two-hour block of uh, wrestling before you go to mixed martial arts. And once the... Uh, the, the wrestling ends, the, the wrestling fans that, that are also MMA fans uh, will possibly stick around giving them a four hour block of, uh, of good ratings. Um, that would be the only thing I can think that would be keeping uh, Spike TV out of the deal. 
If you go back to the uh, the end of WCW, if you can remember the last, uh, well, not the last Nitro, but the second and third last Nitro, and one of the last Thunders, uh, it wasn't really a storyline that was going on, because I guess you can say it was real life, but uh, they were informing people uh, that Eric Bischoff was going to have his company... Uh, Oh, I just had it on the top of my mind. I, I can't remember. It was a company that was going to come in, and they were going to buy uh, WCW, and they were going to keep it going. At the last moment, uh, Turner uh, Broadcasting with TBS and TNT both said that they didn't want any wrestling on their uh, broadcast stations. It was kind of weird. Uh, Thunder didn't always pull a, a, a good number on TBS, but uh, Nitro for so long had consistently pulled uh, a good rating, especially with what, um, you know, T uh, with what uh, Spike TV gets from uh, TNA. They, they're, they're very, uh, they're very much pretty much the same number. Um, it, it's funny that they wouldn't on there. They, they decided to go with more of a, uh, a drama uh, feel of what's going on. I think everybody knows. TNT knows drama, and they've always pumped on a good... Uh, good shows on there for everybody to watch but uh, basically Eric Bischoff uh, phoned in, did a phone in interview with Tony Schiavone telling the fans that WCW was in good hands he was going through, he was crunching the numbers with the, uh, the accountants and that the sale was uh, going to go through and he was going to be in charge of the company uh, at the last minute when uh, the uh, TV deal fell through and found out he was buying WCW and WCW didn't have anywhere to go to be on television. Eric Bischoff backed out of the sale and that is when uh, Vince McMahon picked up WCW and bought bought it for pretty much nothing, you know, bringing over I believe 20 of the WCW wrestling contracts that he wanted to bring over, mostly guys that he used in developmental uh, that had smaller deals that didn't really uh, didn't really break the bank in order to make him be there. The, the big name guys. Hogan, Holland, Nash, Goldberg, um, those guys uh, had to wait out of their existing WCW deals in order to be uh, bought up and signed to new WWE deals. It would be stupid for those guys to, to throw away money in order to um, basically uh, just go there. Um, you know, the WCW, the Turner people were going to be paying them for another year or two years to do nothing. You might as well take that free money. Diamond Dallas Page is one guy. I believe it was uh, Booker T as well that knew that their days were numbered if they didn't go to the WB. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page, of course, taking less money to keep wrestling, especially at his age when he when he jumped over, knowing that he didn't have that much longer in wrestling, seeing how he only wrestled for Vince for, I think, two years tops before calling his career uh, quits um, was pretty smart, especially being able to accomplish one of his goals to wrestle at WrestleMania. But uh, who knows what Eric Bischoff would have done uh, with WCW, would he have been able to turn it around. Some people think of Eric Bischoff as a marketing sort of genius, being able to, to come up with schemes. And some people think that basically he just capitalized off of one big angle being the NWO, uh, something that was already going on in Japan that basically he just took from them and just put on our TV over here, just doing sort of like a copy and paste deal and basically never was able to come up with anything other than the NWO, seeing how the NWO went to the dying days of WCW with uh, the, and, you know, the, the the real NWO and then the Wolfpack NWO breaking off in the NWO 2000 and the NWO black and white and you know all this shit. So, you know, that's my only thing. You know, Eric Bischoff, you know, it was sent home or I don't know if he chose to go home or not. It was kind of weird it word when I read the news that he wasn't at Bound for Glory and he wasn't at the Impact tapings in Salt Lake City. And uh, the talent was informed that Bischoff would now be working from home. Uh, when Thursday came around, he was taking pictures of the scenery uh, where he lives instead of saying anything about wrestling. So uh, I don't know if that means that Eric Bischoff is stepping in to buy this company or Eric Bischoff is just sitting at home waiting out the last days of his contract uh, trying to wait until uh, he can start his next venture. Of course, Eric Bischoff's not an idiot. He's going to make uh, all the TNA money he can before uh, it's all said and done. He wouldn't care if he bled the Carters dry uh, for everything uh, that they're worth. Um, I think that there is life in TNA. 
I think the TNA has made great strides in the last few years. I just don't think they've really turned into money. I guess you can say that if you look back at um, TNAs from 2005, 2006, you know, they've really made strides as a, as a company. You can tell that, you know, the way they shoot their shows and the sets they use, they've really grown uh, as a company. So I would like to think that there is more to it. I don't want just what a lot of people want is just, you know, Vince McMahon to step in, buy the company, you know, kill it off and just, you know, basically put um, TNA pay-per-views on uh, WWE 24-7 on demand. Um, I don't know. There, there, there's always fun to be a number two company. I really look at TNA like it's fun to watch, you know, on Thursdays because there is no other wrestling really to watch. And, um... I don't know, it's, it's fun to watch another company. When you watch WB, whether you're watching Raw or SmackDown, these days it was fun when they had the brand initiative, but these days when they do sort of the everybody's everywhere, it seems like you're watching the same shit over and over and over again when you're watching SmackDown and Raw. Um, I, that's why I like main events so much, is because you, you, you do see the lesser guys on there. It's sort of like a mid-card show. The guys that aren't really going anywhere, and a lot of times it's not really like they get their own storylines on the show, but it is sort of fresh from watching it. And you see the guys sort of, it's almost like they're making like the number one contender matches for the U.S. or the Intercontinental title, the tag titles. You get to see the guys moving up that way, so there is sort of like a, um, a progression uh, to that show. So, um, I don't know. I'm not surprised by them saying that TNA is going to uh, close up shop. And they're looking for somebody to buy it. I just hope that, you know, somebody who buys it is somebody who, you know, cares about the wrestling business. You've heard from uh, a lot of interviews, Chris Jericho, Ric Flair, they both stepped up and they said that they wish they would have known what WCW was going to sell for because they would have stepped up and they would have bought it just for the, the tape library below. So maybe, I don't know, you would think that if, if Bischoff buys it, Hogan would be involved So somehow. They've always been linked um, doing something along the way, but, um, you don't, you don't know, maybe some just lottery winner somewhere along the way wants to step up and spend some money on a wrestling company, or, you know, maybe that guy from Fox, he's been said that, uh, Murdoch, yeah, Rupert Murdoch, has said that maybe he wanted to get into the wrestling business for a while, maybe we can have another Ted Turner who just... Wants to spend, 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 and uh, maybe that will uh, make some good wrestling. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know. Fun wrestling talk. Peace out, everybody. Have fun.